I have strict instructions about where to put my foot. Am I doing okay? <laughs> Yay. So to me, life in this context has a ton of different definitions. Anybody want to give an idea what their definition of life w as you're running business is? Shut up, Pat. <laughs> 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 you guys cheated on it. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> Chaos. Chaos. A divorce, a graduation, a wedding. I mean, it can be good, it can be bad. You're trying to do this, you're trying to run your business. Juggling. There you go. Juggling. Great word. I saw a license plate on my way here that said MFLB. Well, you know what? I came up with the MF <laughs> right away. Mighty fine. And then life balance. But it doesn't always end up that way. Um, for me, since I've started my business, life has been um, learning to do my job <laughs> minus 10 coworkers. So I created an HR collaboration so that if people needed more than just recruiting, I was able to have a go-to group. Um, insurance, uh, training, da 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 da. Um, the next thing that happened to me two months after I started my business was being diagnosed with um, breast cancer for a second time. So it was going through surgery, going through chemo, and then it was just learning to listen to my body and pay attention to when I could work, work, and pay attention to those small wins. Then my mom, who at that time was 89 years old, came for a weekend and left eight years later after <laughs> she couldn't take care of herself anymore and I couldn't take care of herself anymore. But it was just realizing that I needed to be her advocate. She needed to be my priority. And then when she died in December, it was hearing her voice from my teenage years that sounded similar to, get to work. <laughs> you know. You're gonna forget all about your woes, get to work. So here I am. <laughs> it's also about laughing. It's also about not taking myself so seriously because I find that when I take myself seriously, I do nothing but aggravate myself and life just goes down the tubes. So I have this slideshow for you that I'm not gonna pay any attention to <laughs> because I found I was doing this too seriously. And as a result, I'm sitting here shaking and I'm not gonna be able to talk to you about the different things that I do do in order to make my business a success. And right now it's a better success or the best success that it's been in the close to 30 years that I have been doing this. A lot because of my collaboration with people from here at eFree. Um, God, I don't know where this came from, sorry. If anybody wants to jump in. <laughs> it's being grateful, you know. Knowing when to appreciate and what to appreciate and what to toss to the side and kick to the curb and man, can I kick. Um, it's collaboration, again, I don't know, are any of you TED Talk people? Yes, yes. So are you familiar with Rachel Botsman? I am not. She does a TED Talk on collaborative consumption. And for the most part, she does talk about bigger things like Uber or Airbnb. But if you look around St. Louis, Medici <coughs> Media Space is a collaboration. Um, uh, can you help me? Business Lodge, and are you familiar with, um, oh shoot, Jacqueline Way, as far as the TED Talk, and Giving 365 Give? She started an educational program for her three-year-old, and I figure if a three-year-old can do it, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, each day, they were going to do something to give back, 
and that's what I try to do every day. It can be something dinky. It doesn't have to cost you anything. It could be smiling at somebody as you're walking down the hall. It can be reaching out to a person. I had dinner last night with my mom's 92-year-old friend. I think she enjoyed it, you know, just being nice to people. Um, but as a result, she started a blog, and then she has a website now called the 365 Give Challenge. So I would like to challenge you all to think about the things that you do to give back on a daily basis, probably more than you truly think about. All of this, bottom line, is about choices, and choices to get out of bed, to do the right thing, to do what you can, when you can, and that's it. I know it's not 15 minutes, but that's what it is. Anybody have questions? <laughs> Thoughts? Comments? <laughs> uh-huh. Bad? Do you take the time to um, revel in your kindness or to at least appreciate it after the fact? If you do something nice for somebody one day, do you actually take the time to, to reflect on that and, and appreciate what you've done? Not as often as I should, but when I do, it makes, and not as often as I should, but as I'm doing it, oftentimes I just feel better. Uh-huh. Who's an ideal client for you? Um, oh, that's another thing I was going to say. Well, Jim Canada is a good candidate <laughs> or client. <laughs> Lori St. Clair is a good client, but one of the things that I do do, my industry standard, I'm a recruiter, the industry standard is to have a guarantee of their service for 30 to 90 days, and I have a one-year guarantee. I'm going to screen just as tightly for the people that I introduced to you if I had a 30 or 90-day guarantee, so why not just do it for a year? I want it to, you all to be happy. So, ideal client, small to mid-sized business that's hiring. Mary? Would you consider the Zoom room that you do? That's another thing that's in my notes, <laughs> which I didn't do. Tuesday through Friday, I have a Zoom room that we call the office because there are so many of us who work independently and have that feeling of, oh, I'm all by myself. Um, different people from different industries get together in our Zoom room. Yesterday, actually, Mary, I was reading my introduction, and I said, will you listen to this? And she said, read it again. And I said, da -da -da -da. and she I said, will you? Say it like that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> in my head, it was, ew, no, <laughs> not really. <laughs> but she said, shoot it to me, and five minutes later, I had my introduction. She said, I'm not married to it. Make it a changes. I didn't. I just shot it to Glenda and here I am today. So, Lori? So, you know, I think juggling was a great word that was thrown out at the beginning um, because it is a huge juggling act between, you know, personal life, family, everything going on there in the business side. Um, what kind of things have you used along the way with the different things you've experienced to kind of kick your butt in gear and to stop the woe is me, this is going on, that's going on, to say, hey, just jump back in, you gotta you know, put one foot in front of the other. What, what are some, some things that you've done to help kind of kick your butt back into gear and, and balance the two? Well, first of all, it is reaching out to people and saying, you know, hearing them say, Lisa, you're not so bad. Um, I use a matrix that tells me that if I haven't made my calls, if I haven't sent the emails, if I haven't reached out on LinkedIn, it's staring me in the face and I really don't have anybody to blame other than me. And it is. It's truly just collaborating and recognizing I can't do all of this by myself. I need to reach out to other people. I have my mastermind group, I have E4E, e, I have our office in the afternoons, so that's what I do. Uh-huh. What motivates you the most? Um, doing, doing good, doing well. Um, I'm my biggest competition. Uh, so doing better than I did last week, doing better than I did an hour ago, sometimes. Can you share one of your success stories? Jim can. 
Okay. Well, oh man. Do you Put mind? <laughs> no, I don't mind. I, um, we were having some challenges with um, uh, an answering service that we brought in for our help desk. So our clients will call in to the answering service and they were asking them far too many questions and it just was very impersonal. So I reached out to Lisa and I said, Lisa, I, uh, I'm looking to bring in someone to answer our phones that will uh, understand technology, that will more importantly be a warm, friendly person on the phone that's going to get to know our client's wife's name and their dog's name and their kids' names and make it more personal um, for, for when they call in. So we put together a, a job description and Lisa went out and found several candidates and she recommended one that is just absolutely killing it for us. So great success story. It would happen very quickly. She was all over it and found the right person for us and now they, it's really made a big difference in the customer service that we're providing to our clients. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Anybody else? Mark? Mark? So you'd mentioned about the Kindness 365. You try to do something nice every day. What's the one thing you've done for someone else that got you the most reaction or most appreciation? Probably just reaching out to somebody and making a phone call, how are you? I mean, the things that you can do truly are just so easy to do, so inexpensive to do, and, and you do those in numbers, and you do a good job. Um, it, it just keeps you going, or it keeps me going. Lori? I'd like to just tag, I'd just like to tag a comment to that, that a smile to someone holds a bigger impact than the majority of us probably realize. Um, several years ago, I was pulling into a networking event and um, I just happened to look up and just smiled at the person who was kind of catty corner across from me who was getting out of their car. And, um, and that's all it was. I just looked up and just saw her and smiled and didn't know the person. It wasn't going to the networking group or anything and um, scared me to death because two seconds later, she's at my window of my car. I'm going, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting ready to get out and I, I didn't realize she'd walked up. Um, but she's like, I just want to say thank you very much for, for smiling. That was just so nice of you to do. And it, it really blew my mind that I thought nothing of it at the time, but the impact of that person, I, I don't know her, I don't know what kind of day she was having, but it made an impact to that person. And um, that's something that has always stuck with me ever since, that a, a small thing, just a smile to someone that you don't know, you're just passing by, can have such a huge impact on that person's life. Writing a note to somebody can have a huge impact on someone. Anybody else? Dale? Yeah, Lisa, you mentioned uh, that you created a collaboration group with other uh, related HR types of <laughs> professions. Uh -huh. Were there, besides the, the differences in skill sets, were there any other criteria that you used in deciding who to have join your group? You know, it's, for me, a collaboration is like work in that there's a culture. And so they need to have the same um, work ethic and the same thoughts about giving, the same thoughts about caring as I do. Bill? Lisa, I'm going to, um, just one real quick story. This speaks to the sensibility that you demonstrated with uh, Jim Canada's uh, placement there with, with the candidates that you, and that is the, the initial impression. You didn't do this, you didn't, you didn't place this, but I walked into Nick Lemia's office last, uh, I guess, Thursday, and I had called and his assistant had set up this appointment and so I was going in just a general networking thing and I walk in the door and there's a woman at a desk there and I said, uh, my name is Bill Higley and she says, Bill! <laughs> and jumps up and hand is out like this and then there's another assistant and 
I was made to feel like I was their long lost cousin returning. It, yeah. and they had been waiting for me. It was just by reflex. It was absolutely that fast. And so um, that's a tremendous compliment to that office. So you're, you're demonstrating that same sensibility to, I mean, you could have placed that, you know. Yeah. And so you, that's what the tool that you bring to the table, but it really works. Well, and it is my, the tool that I could bring to the table, but bottom line, they made you feel great just by extending their hand. Didn't take much, you know? Thanks. Thanks.